Hello again, Dr. James Simono. My friends call me Jim Simono. I'm the director of Child Evangelism Fellowship of North Alabama, and we've been going through the Lord's Prayer to better learn how to use the Lord's Prayer to help us pray. God said it was a pattern for his disciples. Matthew 6 says, Matthew 6 verse 9, pray then like this. That's how it starts off. And we've gone through the pieces of the Lord's Prayer. Now we come to verse 13 of Matthew 6. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. You know the story of Jesus being tempted by the devil. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. After he fasted for 40 days, kind of reminding us of the 40 years of wandering of Israel, Jesus passed the test. Satan tried to tempt him to turn away from God to look for his own needs more than others. We are all tempted. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was struggling. It says with great drops of blood. And he was crying out to the Father, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, thine will, not mine, be done. Lord, struggling to, to not let ourselves be tempted, not to give up on doing the right thing. Sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. But God gives us strength, even as Jesus showed us. Jesus, who died on the cross and rose again, to give us strength to do the right thing. I have a picture from the Gust of Dore Bible. If you remember, after a season, an angel came and touched Jesus and strengthened him. We need the strength that God provides so we would not give in to temptation. Lead us not to temptation. It's a request that God might keep us from being overcome by temptation. Technically, God doesn't tempt us. The devil tempts us. God does test us, though. And those distinctions are very subtle but very important. God tests us to see if we'll do the right thing. Satan tempts us because he's trying to make us fall into sin. Are there limits to temptation? Well, we can only be tempted as far as God will allow it to go. Think of Job. God said you can only go this far in his life. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who not allow you to be tempted beyond what you were able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape. God will give you the help that you need. Sometimes we don't take it. But he promises to give us the help we need to escape temptation. In a sense, our souls are a battleground, one author said, between heaven and hell. We are tempted again because God's testing our sincerity. God is purifying us. But Satan has come to destroy us. He's experienced at testing and tempting people, trying to lead them off the track. He's been doing it for thousands of years. He's called the deceiver, the accuser, where God in Christ is the comforter. He's the helper. All we have to do to overcome temptation ultimately is to look to Christ and find our strength in him. We're tempted from within because of that little piece of the flesh that's still within us, even as Christians. It says there's a struggle between the flesh and the spirit. The spirit works in us and makes us want to follow God, but our flesh struggles against that. The world also is trying to pull us to do things the wrong way, not God's way. The devil himself would, would have us tempted and going in the wrong way, but God is our help, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we pray to them. God's Spirit works in our conscience and helps us fight back. He works within us to help us. He gives us godly traditions so that we can remember the other saints that have fallen, followed before and learn from them how we can follow God and not fall into sin. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that overcame with the strength that God provided. We have friends and family, godly people around us that can help us. The temptation is real. The temptation can be deadly. God's help is real. We need to pray for help for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters in Christ that we be available to them. We're praying, lead us not to temptation. So let's pray. Through your Holy Spirit, O Lord, you led your Son, our Savior, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and overcome the power of the evil one. 
Jesus overcame Satan and his temptations. Though Noah and Adam, Abraham at different times failed, yet you forgave them, Jesus, and you overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil. Jesus, overcome in us the temptations. Lead us not to temptation, but if it comes, Father, even as you allowed your son to be tested, Father, we pray that we would overcome in the strength of Jesus. Lord, we're praying that you would make us strong. We know that our victory, our strength, our ability to resist and overcome the evil one lies in the power of the resurrected Christ working in us. We can put to death the deeds of the flesh. We can resist the devil and he will flee. Though you've told us we will sin in this life, yet you've also said we can overcome. And we pray for the overcoming of Christ to be shown more and more. Don't just help us as individuals, but help all your people, all your church. We pray this not because of ourselves, but because Jesus overcame. In his holy and precious name we ask it. Amen.